Man, got around. OG7 back here. Hey, you know what, guys? I changed my mind. This is going to be the final iteration of the Chronicles of Angela, the Circle K whore with the fat and juicy ass. And the name of this video is Find a Group of Savages, then work on leveling up. So um, I want to tell you how the devil works or Satan, how evil works, man. And this is not a religious um, video. It's just a fact of life video, man. So the, you learn this from the fucking Nazis. You learn this from the Russians. You learn this from the Chinese. What they do is when babies are born, they give them these different tests. Test for acuity, test for athleticism, test for reflexes, all this. And they divide them into three different classes. And I've read a study somewhere, like if the baby's eyes follow the object very precisely, they know the baby's intelligent. They take them and put them into the scientific group. They groom them from babies to be scientists. If the baby's ability to grab stuff quickly is um, is very apparent, they put them into the athletics program, dude. If you notice, like Chinese and Russians and Eastern Bloc countries, they groom them early. And if the baby is just very, is just very like rambunctious, they put him into the warrior class, bro. So he becomes like the warrior, dude. And then if the baby's just passive, they just make him a worker bee socialist, bro. So what I'm trying to say to you, man, in this life, man, I want to talk to all of you men, bro. I don't care if you're young, old, middle-aged, decrepit. Even if you're a young boy at 10 years old, because I think, man, I think at 10 years old, a boy realizes he's going about to become a man or at least a teenager. In a lot of countries, man, teenagers are men. Don't get it twisted in this soft-ass country. But what I want to say to you is this, guys. Just from working on that uh, <laughs> that TV series, man, this week, I have my eyes open because, man, everything that glitters is not gold, meaning that – and maybe it's just the other movies I've done so far, the 14 other movies or whatever I've done. I, I work – every movie said there's some UFC fighters there, there's some bouncers there's some bodyguards, there's some WWE dudes there, there's professional boxers, kickboxers. It's just a bunch, because everybody's trying to get this this Vegas money, because there's money in these movies, guys. And so I've been fortunate in the past, I worked with these dudes, and they represented what I represented, you know, was it was consistency. But then this last movie, I got to see that just because a dude looks like a savage and walks like a savage don't mean he's a savage with women. So what does that mean, guys? Go ahead and ask me. What's that mean, OG7? What does that mean? It means that for whatever reason, you can be won a genetic lottery. You're a tall, big savage, and you like to fight because you that's just part of your testosterone nature. But your mentals are fucked up because you're generation X, Y, Z, whatever the fuck you are. Anybody born from the fucking 2000s and below, you motherfuckers is fucked up, man. You guys believe in this, all oh, men and women are equal and all this fucking shit, and women have a right, and you have a right to get your PP cut off, and you have a right for women to be men over you and treat you like a bitch and all that. It's all good, baby, but it's just not the way, it, that's not the way, it, that's not the way it is, man. I'm going to give you a prime example, guys, and this is going to blow your fucking minds. So play, pay close attention, you ADHD type motherfuckers. And this is this is what you're gonna understand. So you guys know how dogs are evolved from wolves, right? So a dog is basically a, a domesticated wolf over eons and eons of evolution and generations of being domesticated. But I'm gonna tell you a little story, and this is a true story. So when I lived in Sacramento and I was married, because I was a nice guy, beta male bitch boy, and I was playing this role as this techie dude, geeky dude, which I just did it because I was greedy, and I like making a couple hundred thousand a year because I just came from out of prison being homeless and then just seeing them checks. It just reinforced my fucking duplicitous behavior. But let me tell you something. Deep down, I was a savage. And it didn't come out until, man, my fucking, you know, my, I caught my wife using drugs, bro, and then I just, man, it just like, I don't play that, bro. We just I start yelling at her. My voice got really savage, and the neighbors called the police. But let me tell you what happened. There was this dude in Sacramento. He was breed. He found this. He found this. Um, he found this injured wolf because he was a hunter, and he had these. Because Sacramento's got some open areas. He had a wolf trap, no, a bear trap, and the wolf's um, what's this called? The wolf's leg got caught in a bear trap, 
and it was there. It was almost dead, so it was just all dehydrated. He found it a couple of days later, no water or food. So he took the wolf home, and he nursed it, right? He nursed the wolf, man. So then he had a female German shepherd, so this dude in his infinite wisdom was like, oh, man, you know, dogs and wolves are kind of the same thing and shit, man. I'm just going to breed them. So this dude, man... This dude breeded the male German, sh- the, the male uh, wolf with the female German shepherd. So you had these these wolf German shepherds. And the, he had like 10 of them because they come out and I don't know if they call packs or breeds or whatever the fuck they're called. So he put an ad out, man. And my wife at the time, she liked dogs, right? So then she's like, oh, it'd be cool to get a German shepherd wolf or wolf German shepherd or whatever. So we went and got a boy and a girl. This is a true story. And I don't, hey, bro, I don't like to raise dogs for fighting. That's not my thing. I think that's cruel. But, hey, maybe I'm a soft bitch boy. But as long as I'm harder than you, that's all that matters, motherfucker. I ain't the hardest motherfucker on the planet. So anyway, we raised them to love the kids and love our kids and everything. And the kids would ride their backs because our kids were small and just love them. And, and I played with the kids. And then, uh. I just noticed the male dog, dude, he just started being very rebellious, man. So then one of my homies go, hey, man, like, <coughs> that motherfucker's still a wolf. You got to take him into obedience school. So I took him in, and then the vet was going to turn me in. He's like, hey, man, that's a German Shepherd wolf, bro. That's illegal. I was like, hey, I didn't breed. He said, yeah, but those are dangerous fucking animals. It's still a wild animal, bro. And I was like, hey, man, I just, you know, I'm just trying to, he's got a sister at home. And I'm just trying to keep the family together. My kids love. He's okay. I'm gonna tell you what, man. I'm gonna teach you how to train this animal, and you got to be the alpha over this dude because when he hits puberty and gets big, if you're not the alpha, if he doesn't see you as the alpha, these are pack animals, and he'll attack your family. So I went home and had a talk with my wife. And back then, bro, I was just you know, I was just straight out of prison. I wasn't fearing nothing, and I had a, uh, I had a lot of toys. Let's just put it like that. So I would train the dude, train him every day. All day I trained him because I listened to what the vet told me. So, look, man, long story short, these dogs hit puberty, bro. And the female got big, but the male got fucking super big and huge, and he was aggressive. I used to have to put a muzzle on him and a choker. And, dude, I was the only one who could walk him because I had a choker on him. And when he went to heel, I would grab his, hey, bro, I would grab his fucking sides of his face, and I'd get in his face and say, you will heal! And he knew I was alpha because I wasn't afraid because I had the tool in my hand. If he didn't want to heal, he would be somebody's meal. You understand? Because either you're a savage or you're not. So what I'm saying, man, eventually he had to be put down because this motherfucker, man, we'd be in the house. Like when we was in the house, I didn't have to put a muzzle on him or, or a choker because he we in the house. And, you know, I got tools and he listened. But, dude, if the mailman came by or the fucking meter man... Or the milkman or whoever. This motherfucker we going crazy trying to get out and eat him. He was a savage, bro. And then we put him in the backyard when we have guests. He be trying to get in the house and fucking get him, bro. He's just a savage. And it just got to be too much, man. So what I'm trying to say, bro, is this, bro. In this life, bro, you got to find, if you're not a natural savage, bro. You got to find a group of savages and then you got to, like, dude, I, most of the guys I hang out with in Vegas, bro, and even when I was in Cali, I wasn't the alpha to alpha. No, I was an alpha among alphas, but there was a hierarchy. Either they have more money than me, more power, more status, more connections, more titles, whatever. I'll be just telling you the stories about my wins, but there's many situations where I wasn't the alpha to alpha, man. The Germans more alpha than me, bro. And I learned from them, man. So what I'm going to try to say to you guys, man, so you don't end up with the Chronicles of Angela, the Circle K fucking whore with a fat ass. Little Tommy, man, wasn't the alpha, bro. He was a, he was a type of dude. Like, he looked like an alpha on the outside, but he was a beta on the inside. And fucking Angela would just run that dude into the ground just telling about her fucking personal stories with her baby's daddy and her bullshit that's – <laughs> the fact that how many men she been ran through and mistreated. I told him, man, don't be listening to that fucking shit. So the reason I'm bringing that up, man, because when I worked on this movie, this TV series, bro, all the other guys that were there doing the bodyguards, they were like, 
they were either professional bodyguards or former fighters or or mar- you know what I'm talking about. They were former fighters, not martial artists, bro. And here's what the difference is. And I tell these guys on my Patreon, some listen, some don't. That's on them. But, bro, you have to at least get punched and kicked and beat up one time. If you've never been in a fight in your life, you got to join a boxing gym, bro, or a kickboxing gym. Listen to me. Or a Muay Thai gym or a cage fighting gym. And no, for the first, you know, first 90 days, they just gonna have you doing the conditioning drills, timing, jumping ropes, getting bags, shadow box, and all that. But then you gotta man up and you gotta tell the fucking owner of the gym, say, hey man. And it, here's what's your excuse. Some of you guys wear glasses and you'd be like, hey OG Severbeck, if I put in contacts, they're gonna knock my contacts out. No. If you wear glasses, you can't see without your glasses. And this is where trust and faith comes in. You gotta tell the gym owner, like, hey man, I can't see without my glasses on. I don't wanna put contacts in because I don't want to get my retina my retina knocked off. But what I want to do is I want to do some light sparring. This is what I'm saying, light sparring, like just 40% with a dude that's about at my level. And you put the gloves on, you put the mouthpiece on, you put the cup on. And even though you can't see the whole exercise of the game, the whole, the whole, the whole goal of this exercise is for you to feel what it's like to get punched and kicked and slammed, bro. Now, I recommend you do it at least three times, not in one day, but in three different days. Because then you get to really cognizant, cognitively understand logically. Like, it's a very humbling experience because then you know where you really are. But all this shadow box and hidden bags and all that, and you, 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 you listen, your, your emotional tampon to some whore with a fat ass. You're not really a savage, bro. You're not really a savage till you get in the cage or get in the ring and get a couple of bell ringers, bro. And then, my friend, you can understand that there's some motherfuckers that savages for real and it helps you to level up. So then, my friend, you might get to a point where you start understanding when you got these headaches, bro, and the ears ringing and shit, that no woman is about above you because she's always meant to be beneath you. And you're going to keep it in the natural order of natural fucking animalistic living.